dear students, let us now move to the lab and perform an activity on rusting. Welcome to the lab. Our aim for today's activity is to investigate the conditions necessary for rusting to take place. The materials required for this activity, we have three boiling tubes, we have a test tube rack, we have corks, and then we have three nails in the three test tubes. In the third test tube, we have a whitish substance, which is calcium chloride. Now let us go through the procedure for the activity. We have labeled all the three test tubes. Test tube one has been filled to about a half with distilled water and a nail placed in it, as you can see. And what this means is that test tube one has been subjected to both water and air or oxygen. Test tube two here has also been filled to about a half with boiled distilled water and a nail placed in it. Now the reason for the water being boiled is to remove any dissolved oxygen or air from the water. And you will see that it has also been corked and covered or a little oil has been poured over the surface of the water. This is to prevent air or oxygen from dissolving into the water in the tube. Some anhydrous calcium chloride has been put in test tube 3 and a nail placed in it. The tube has been corked. Now the reason for the anhydrous calcium chloride in this test tube is to dry any moisture from the tube. The calcium chloride is serving as a drying agent to dry any moisture from the tube. What this means is that the test tube 3 is subjected to only air but no water or moisture. We are going to leave the setup for at least three days and observe any changes in appearance of the nails after the third day. Welcome back to the lab. Let's observe the outcome of the investigation and complete the table below. The nail in test tube one has rusted. I hope you can see that. And you can see the reddish brown stain on the nail. Good. The nail in test tube one was subjected to both water and air or oxygen. And therefore it has rusted. The nail in test tube 2 has not rusted. It has not changed. I hope you can see that. And this nail was also subjected to only water but no oxygen. The nail in test tube 3 has also not rusted. It hasn't changed. This nail was subjected to only oxygen but no water. Let us now analyze our results. From the table of results, we can deduce that both water and oxygen are needed for rusting to occur. Without oxygen, rusting does not occur. Water alone is not sufficient for rusting to occur. And without water, rusting does not occur. Oxygen alone is also not sufficient for rusting to occur. Let us now...